Hi and welcome back to another poorly lit video on Half of Heidi. Um, I've actually got some notes this time so hopefully I won't waffle so much. Today is actually eight weeks until my surgery date. Um, actually, what is today's date? The 13th of September, so my surgery is on the 8th of November. So literally eight weeks. Very exciting. So I did a couple of things today in preparation for both the surgery but also some stuff that I'm planning ahead for, which is unlike me. I'm not that uh, organised when it comes to my physical health. So I just wanted to talk about a couple of those things and I'm also going to do the dreaded body shot at the end. Um, yeah, that one's a bit of a killer. Okay, so I checked into the hospital today um, using the online admission form. There was just a whole bunch of questions to, to, to fill out about, you know, past medical history. Um, yeah, it wasn't really complicated or anything. Something though that I thought was, um, well, that triggered a question for me and I was wondering if anybody knew the answer or could help me out in understanding this before I next see uh, my surgeon is medication. So if I take daily medication and ev like everything I'm reading basically says you, you don't drink or eat anything for the first 24 hours and then you're on liquids for a week or two and then mushy foods, etc. So how do I, do I take my medication or do I not take my medication? I'm just, a, yeah, I'm a little bit confused by how that process works. So I'll definitely do some more research, but I, yeah, if anybody happens to know, can you let me know? Um, it also triggered me, this online admission form, to thinking about um, enduring power of attorney. So if something was to go wrong, who do I want making decisions on my behalf from either a financial or a medical perspective? So I've printed out the form um, to have that looked at, considered. Um, of course, I want my husband down, um, but he got a little bit upset. I don't know what word to use. <laughs> um, upset at the thought of me even thinking I needed to do that. But I don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm probably overthinking the potential, like I'm probably making the risks higher in my head in terms of what they really are. Like my surgeon talked to me about the 1% um, risks, but I don't know. For some reason I'm thinking, you know, I'm like my BMI is something like 65. I'm 188 kilograms or 414 pounds. I got that checked, 414 pounds. And I'm five foot eight. I'm super morbidly obese. I just feel like that surely comes with more surgical risks. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm trying to get some things in order like that and making sure my husband is lifted on my life insurance um, beneficiary. Scary stuff. Um, I also signed up for private hospital cover, um, which seems, you know, two years t too late in terms of being able to pay for my vertical sleeve gastrectomy. Um, but I guess I'm just thinking now, like all of the videos I've seen of um, these remarkable people and their amazing weight loss journeys and how obviously the vast majority of them end up with loose um, and excess skin. So at, when you see my body shot, you'll agree with me that I think it's highly likely that I will end up with an uh, you know, a excessive amount of skin. Um, and I just want to be able to have the surgery, you know, in maybe two years time um, and be covered by hospital insurance because the, yeah, the costs of the hospital were pretty extreme. If you go back to, uh, I think it was my number five um, video, and I was talking about how much the different costs were associated with the procedure. Um, just off the top of my head, I think it was like 12,500 or something of the um, total amount was just the hospital costs. I could, I could be wrong. It's, it's all a bit blurry to me. I've seen so much information. 
Um, so what else did I do? I also started researching and um, making contact with personal trainers in my area. I definitely want to be able to have organised and found someone I really click with um, so I've got someone ready to go uh, post-recovery. Um, I can't do much exercise at the moment. I mentioned in previous videos I'm um, because I've been sedentary for so long, for quite like a year, I've been pretty sedentary. Um, I think I just don't have really good um, muscles in my back. And when I, when I walk for um, more than five or ten minutes, my back just really, like it just all seizes up and gets really painful. And I pretty much just have to stop and rest. So um, I can do about five or ten minutes at a time. So I'm not using that as an excuse not to exercise pre-surgery. I just don't think I need a personal trainer pre-surgery. I definitely want one after, afterwards when I've lost like that first little bit of weight and maybe it'll be just a bit easier to get mobile. Who, who knows? I don't know what to expect in reality. Which brings me on to my next topic, which is also researching and making contact with um, people in my local community who have had weight loss surgery. So whether that is um, gastric sleeve like I'm going to have or whether they've had a bypass or um, lap band, like whatever they've had, I am really, really just want to make some direct personal connections with people that I can go, you know, have a coffee with face to face and just ask them the 101 questions that I have. Um, I'm really, really keen to get as many perspectives as I possibly can and make some friends that if something happens, I can reach out to and get some immediate you know, confirmation or reassurance that something that I'm experiencing is perfectly fine and normal, or if no, it's not and I should, you know, seek help. I'm just one of those people who likes a second opinion. So I started that process today just through some uh, local community Facebook pa pages and I've already um, spoken to some really wonderful people who um, have agreed to talk to me or meet up with me for coffee and things like that. Um, so yeah, it just goes to show how awesome people are. People are great. Um, I think my main concerns about the surgery is the, the pain. My husband would be the first to tell you that I have a really low pain threshold. I seem to, I don't know, I just feel pain. I don't, I'm a wuss. Um, so I am really worried, I think, um, from what I've heard, maybe the incisions won't hurt so much, but it'll be the gas pain um, that will hurt. Um, I don't know. I'm just a really big wuss, so I'm worried about the pain. And I'm worried about the recovery time. I'm worried that, you know, I've scheduled two weeks off work and I'm just worried, is that enough? Or... Um, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, my, my boss is really fantastic and she said health comes first and whatever happens, happens. Um, I just really don't like letting people down when I've told them this is my expectation, I expect to be off for two weeks. It would really, I just feel really bad if, and plus I've had so much sick leave in the last year or two, um, just from all of the different health problems that I've been having. Um, you know, whenever I say that and talking to friends and my boss and even my psychologist, you know, they all point out to me that I'm just as entitled to the, you know, the sick days that I'm allocated as everybody else. I actually don't get colds. Like, I haven't had a cold in years, so maybe I should look at it that way. The time I have off for weight-related illness or mental health-related illnesses um, is, you know, I could have been having that as, you know, time off with the flu or a cold or something, and no, not, so... I don't know, something I'm just paranoid about, guilty and whatnot. Um, also, thanks to me again, Jen, who commented on my video saying how I just really couldn't find any um, Australian VSG vloggers. Um, she linked me up to one. And from there, YouTube then miraculously started recommending um, a whole bunch of Aussie VSGers to me. So thanks for that. I really appreciate it. If there is any other recommendations for other... Um, 
vloggers that people want to recommend, I would very much like to see them. Um, at this stage, I'm also really keen to start finding people who have a similar starting weight to me. So the, you know, the, the 180 kilo round mark or 500 plus pounds. Um, I'm just really, really keen now to see other people with that experience. Um, I found a couple, um, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to be the, it seems to be the exception and not, you know, the standard. Okay, so I think that was really all I wanted to talk about. So now comes the dreaded body shots. Uh, so what I'm going to do is stand up, step back, um, put my chair aside, take off my mic um, and film some body shots. And I'll just end the video after the body shots. I'm not actually going to say any more. So I'll say my goodbyes now. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in. Um, as always, I'm an open book. If you've got any questions for me or if you've got any advice for me, um, would definitely appreciate what you have to say. Okay, on to the dreaded body shots. Until next time, bye.